Hey guys, what's up? It's Virtuals from Zenith Corporation. I recorded this video once and then muted my mic, so I've already lost my voice, so uh, stay tuned for a little bit more of that. Anyway, I just got back from vacation and it's time to play some Starbase. I've been messing around with the SSC and thought I might be of use to uh, actually make a short video about kind of how the SSC works and the things that you can do in it. To actually open the SSC slash ship design, you actually need to come to this orange building, which is next to the Easy Build Hall. In the Orge building, there's also these blue instance zones, which allow you to fly your ship into it and then work on it um, undisturbed. So players can't um, run into you, it won't despawn, and things like that. Um, that's very useful. Anyway, how to actually access the thing. Obviously, you can spawn here, but to access the, the spaceship designer, you're going to click the screen and start editing private. Now, you can also want uh, you can also edit in a group. You can do that by clicking social and then group and then company or friends and adding somebody you want to your group. You can invite them to your group essentially. Uh, this allows you to work on ship with somebody else like I said. If, uh, let's say if I want Ozzy, right? Let's say if I'm going to work on Ozzy's ship, he needs to enter the designer before I follow him in. Or if he's going to help me work on my ship, I need to enter first. That's how that works. Anyway, we'll go ahead and enter. When you enter the spaceship designer, you're greeted with a plethora of things that you don't know how to use, and that's kind of how I felt. I, <laughs> I spent a lot of time figuring out how this works and kind of struggling through it. I think you will too, but maybe I can help cut down on that learning curve just a little bit. We'll start off on the left with the asset browser. Um, this basically allows you to place anything you'd like from the game, um, beams, decorative items, etc., etc., etc. So like if I want to place a beam, I can select beam folder, then straight beams, and pick a beam I like. There, we got a beam. What I did was I clicked on the beam, brought it into my, uh, my workspace, and then to place it, I clicked my left click. Also, it's worth noting that you can rotate these things around and copy and paste them. I'll get to that in just a second. Now the asset browser is also useful for things like modules. The game comes with some pre-made modules. Um, if you, you can access them by selecting the Spaceship Modules tab. Uh, let's look at this one. One of my favorites is the A1 decal set because it has a bunch of custom stuff that uh, would be relatively challenging to make with the decal tool. Moving on to the copy paste uh, features, you can actually select one of these items. You can control Z and, can, and then control V to uh, to get it here. Now if I place, I can also control Z to undo, and this also selects the last item. Also control X works exactly how you expect. Now to clear the entire section, you can actually just select by holding down your left click, and then you can click delete. You can also create your own modules. To create a module, you just build something that you want. Like if I built a couple beams together, I can build the beams. I can select them. I can click this button here to create the module, or I can hit Control e This gives me this little green dot, and this allows me to select all of the items in the module at the same time. Once they're selected, I can click the Save Module button, type in the name, and click Save, and it'll show up in your modules folder. I'll go ahead and show you the ones I've built. Now, you only get T1 thrusters in the uh, Stock Modules tab, so if you want a T2 thruster, you've got to build it yourself. It's worth saving that thruster as a module, so you can use it on later builds. That's what I've done. If I select that module, I can pull it into my workspace, and now I have a fully functional T2 thruster that I can use and copy around. Say I want to add this into a block, I can Control c Control v and then I can use X, Y, and Z keys to rotate it to my desired direction. Of course, it's going to be the last one I select. <laughs> and then it will snap together like so. And now these are two separate modules. I also found that building cockpits and making them function was somewhat challenging, so I designed a universal cockpit piece, if it'll ever come into view. Here it is, <laughs> upside down too. So I can just slap this on a ship and it'll work. Basically is the idea. I guess now we'll go ahead and move on to the, the toolbox itself, um, also the toolbar. You can you can actually uh, access these by just clicking 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. on your uh, number bar. Now, number 1 is the move tool. It basically gives you a coordinate axis when you select something. If you select the origin and hold down your left click, you can drag it around and change its orientation normally using the X, Y, and Z keys. Furthermore, if you grab one of these axes, um, you can move along a single axis. This is helpful for precisely placing things. Now the rotate tool works exactly how you expect. Also, you grab the axes and you drag your mouse. 
just like that so you can rotate things around that uh it does become a little bit problematic if you are doing that near something because then it just snaps around now uh, the pointer tool is pretty straightforward you can select stuff and delete it um now we'll move on to the bolt tool it works exactly how you expect the bolt tool to work um and also just like how the bolt tool works in the normal gameplay so if I put two beams together, obviously I could weld them, but I could also bolt them, like so. I'm left clicking to place the bolts, and to remove the bolts I can right click. There's also a cable tool, it allows you to place cables and pipe. In the toolbox, or the, sorry, <laughs> in the tool options panel you can actually select between cable and pipe. If you don't see this panel you can click right here to hide or unhide it. This allows you to basically click and drag to place your cables. Um, you can also delete them by clicking quickly or holding down your right click. And of course you can switch to pipes if you so choose. Alright. Um, now we'll go ahead and look. Uh, I'm not going to look at the durability tool quite yet. We'll save that for when I actually spawn a ship in. The snap tool shows you snap points um, and also allows you to assemble things. It's kind of not useful in my opinion. <laughs> Uh, the socket tool is useful for uh, using conduit, so like you can put a socket onto something um, like that, and then you can connect things to it with conduit. I don't personally use conduit. There's also the paint tool you can select out of the paint colors and, uh, and color things. There's also an auto bolt tool. This allows you to add or remove all bolts on a selection or your entire construct. So if you've built an entire ship and you forgot to bolt it, you can auto bolt. The auto bolt tries to make the best decisions, however it rarely does, so you want to keep that in mind. The materials tool allows you to switch ma the material of beams or paneling, so if instead of base GM I want something that's corrosive resistant, I can actually se select a GZM and then change the material of the beam or plate I'm working on. <coughs> There's also a weld tool. Um, the weld tool allows you to weld single beams by clicking on them. Unweld beams or apply to all or apply to selection which basically welds all beams on your construct. There's also the decal tool. I need to place a plate to show you how that works. Go to the plates, basic plates, let's get a big one. There we go. So we got a plate here. If I uh, go ahead and select the decal tool I can actually go over here to the browser, not the asset browser, and select decals and this gives me a number of things. If I like a letter like A I can just select it and I can place the decal. Using this, the tool I can size it and uh, and place it how I'd like. So we can go ahead and place it down like that. Now to paint your decal you have to click the paint tool and make sure the paint decals option is on. Once it is then you can just click to paint. Alright I think that's basically all the things I can do with an um, empty build area so we'll go ahead and spawn in a ship. If you click file and then you click open pre-made blueprint this is the ships that the devs have made that you're allowed to place yourself and look at. They're pretty cool however I'm going to place one I've been working on. If I click open and manage blueprints, I can select my last save and load it. Alright, here's the ship I've been working on. Um, with this, I'd like to show you a couple things. Um, mainly the properties and YOLO script editor tab. Now if I click my, um, my select slash cursor key, I can actually point at something that's going to have a property and I can edit it here. So if I'd like to change how this lever functions, I can I can edit the number and click enter to change the data fields. Furthermore, if I'd like to edit a YOLO script, I can click on the YOLO chip and I can edit it here in the script editor instead of having to pull the chip out itself. This works about how you'd expect. Also there's a few interesting things that you can do using the uh, asset browser. You might have noticed that there's a lock and a little I button here. This allows you to show or hide things and also to not build things. So for example, if I click lock, I'm not allowed to mess with the beams, and if I click I, it hides them. So I'm able to more easily see things. Also there's a setting to completely remove the beams if you're uh, working on cabling or something on your ship. Also we can talk about the durability tool. Um, once you have a frame built, um, I might make a tips and tricks thing also because uh, frames are a little bit weird. There's a number of constraints that have to be met for a ship frame to be considered a frame, and those constraints don't make any sense, naturally. 
That being said, if I open the durability tool and then click on my ship, you can see that it's all green. It also shows you the warp class. Um, if the warp class is below one, you've got a durability error, and that's a problem. However, the higher the warp class is, the faster you're able to go through the warp gate. This can be super helpful um, if you don't want to spend 15 minutes looking at your screen. Also, in a ship, you'll see things like these yellow boxes. They will show you things. So, like, this is what's limiting my warp class currently. If I fix the joint on this beam, I might be able to improve my warp class. A lot of these I can't fix, but this one I actually can. So I can actually add another two bolts to it. And I fixed that error. It's not going to go up because I've got a few others that are the problem. <laughs> um, now, if your ship has a fundamental flaw, it's going to have a red box, and it will also tell you what needs to happen. To, uh, to actually fix that durability problem. There's also a few uh, other cool things that you can do with the tab up here. Um, one of those is the virtual mass. It allows you to essentially fill your containers or select an amount of containers with a select amount of mass or maximum mass. This allows you to test your hauling slash mining ship with full containers without actually going and mining the stuff. Furthermore, there's a thruster naming tool. If you know anything about building ships, you might know that uh, Naming thrusters and getting them to work properly with the FCU can be an enormous pain. You can do it manually, sure, however the automatic naming has worked pretty well for me and I haven't had substantial issue with it. I recommend using it. There's also a test mode. The test mode basically takes you out of, um, out of the build area and allows you to use your ship as if you owned it. If I click F5 or this button right here, I'll enter the test mode and now I'm basically my character with all my normal tools and uh, I can actually test my ship. I can hop in the seat. I can go fly around. There's also, uh, in test mode, there is a green box you're not allowed to fly out of. Anything you mine is not going to actually uh, count toward the progress you've made in the game, as you might expect. The test mode is, of course, super helpful for debugging your ship and also generally making sure you like it before you place it down. To exit the test mode, you click Escape and then Exit Test Mode. Or you can click F5. Now let's say you have a ship that you like um, and you're ready to buy it. You can actually click File and then Save Blueprint and Buy Custom Ship. It takes a little bit. Mm. Let's see if we go. It might take me a couple tries. <laughs> it's a big ship and it's a little slow. There it is. All right, this uh, basically tells you the materials you're going to need to get to buy the ship, and then also the assembly cost of the ship. You can reduce the assembly cost by using parts in the station that are fully built already. Once you're done, you have everything. You click yes, you'll buy the ship, and then it will upload the ship blueprint to the Starbase servers, and you'll be able to happily place it on any landing pad you so choose. There are a few little things that I didn't mention, um, like you can see your center mass and thrust using this drop down, and then also there's a fairly comprehensive undo system, uh, so if there's something you'd like to undo specifically, you can. All that being said, I'm sure there's some things that I didn't cover. If you have any more questions, or you would like more help, please leave a comment, I'll get back to you super quick, and uh, I'll try to answer that the best I can. Now if this video was helpful and you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. I'll see you guys later. Thank you for watching.